Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mike Loris bringing you game number two between Team Liquid and Virtus Pro. Game number one did go to Team Liquid. Korok played a fairly sick Magnus in that game. And because of that, we are going to be seeing VP choose to ban out that Magnus, and Team Liquid not going to break from the usual bans of Nick Sassen as, Bat as well as Batrider will give Virtus Pro that Wisp, or Io, or Eo, or. Actually, I think that's all the pronunciations possible, but that is going to be the pickup from Virtus Pro, and well, they're going to be looking for a CK, and with their remaining two picks, I'm pretty sure they'll be able to find it. And then, uh, they won't have to deal with, uh, by banning out the Magnus and then forcing the Wisp into this game, in uh, into their hands, uh, they're going to prevent Team Liquid from running that extremely strong mid lane that really worked well for them last game. Which is going to mean that they're going to, have to run something else. But uh, Team Liquid, they do have the flexibility of running either TC or Korok in that mid lane of VP. Yeah, they're going to go for that Chaos Knight together with the Lone Druid. Now, together, those two heroes don't have huge amounts of synergy with each other. It's most likely just going to be a Lone Druid on a solo lane and CK Wisp. Uh, CK, I'm just going to call him Wisp, screw it. CK Wisp, uh, as well as possibly another hero, possibly a jungling hero, uh, going to be playing as a 2.5 or a tri lane. But Lone Druid and CK both are incredibly, incredibly tanky heroes, and uh, they both partner well, decently well with the Wisp. And you usually don't see Lone Druid Wisp as a huge combination, uh, just because he doesn't have much burst damage. But if he gets really big, then you could jump onto someone, have that bear come right in close, and then just beat them down. Especially if it's going to be someone like a Gyrocopter or a Rubik. Both of those heroes do have very, very small HP pools, and even though Lone Druid doesn't have necessarily a huge amount of burst, he will be able to bring them down with the help of the Wisp, and especially the Wisp's Overcharge, which, although it will help the CK, it will also help the Lone Druid if things uh, get, if when you get right down to it. Uh, that being said, the Wisp will prefer to use everything that he has with the CK, just because it's the Wisp CK, that's, that's the combo, that's why you pick up the Wisp, so you can pick up the CK and follow up. And Team Liquid, they knew exactly what they were getting into as soon as they let the Wisp get through, because they didn't choose to pick up the CK for themselves, instead favoring the Gyrocopter as well as the Rubik. The third pick is going to be that Clockwork, so that's going to be Bulba's hero, probably going to be soloing that hard lane. Really against the CK Wisp, I don't think he's going to do that well, because even though he has cogs for protection, Reality Rift doesn't really care about your cogs. You'll be able to trap yourself in with the CK, but that's exactly what the CK wants, so Clockwork's going to have a little bit of trouble on that top lane, if he does go for that top lane. Now, Team Liquid can choose to go for a try v try situation, and hopefully uh, Clockwork will be up against Lone Druid, in which case Lone Druid will still have the edge. Clockwork is really just going to have to try to get a couple of levels, and then leave the lane, try to get some hookshot ganks, all that good stuff. But Team Liquid, their tri lane is shaping up pretty decently if it is, in fact, what they want to do. Gyrocopter does have the potential to go mid, which we might see, although I think Team Liquid would rather not do that. Uh, but Gyrocopter, Rubik, uh, Gyrocopter does have a lot of damage, and Rubik does have that setup. However, against the CK Wisp stunning combination, they're going to need something that inc incredibly potent to cap off this lineup. If they get a Visage or if they get a Undying, just to kind of have that hard tri lane shutdown, then they will be able to make things happen, at least stand toe to toe with VP. Although, still, CK Wisp, as well as one other hero, whether it be you know Enchantress or Chen or something like that, or not a Bane Elemental. But they still will be incredibly dangerous. Now keep in mind, VP do get the first pick after this banning phase, so they will be able to shape up their tri lane first. If that means taking a hero that Team Liquid would have liked to take, well, that's effectively giving them another ban on top of the already three in their secondary ban phase. Both teams are probably going to look towards a mid lane as well. Uh, VP could choose to solidify their tri lane with their upcoming pick, or they could go for a solo mid hero. Would not be surprised to see a puck being picked up this game. Uh, Storm Spirit, uh, he might do decently on Team Liquid, get a lot of mobility, get a large initiation range, and uh, it's a great counter ganking tool when you're up against the Wisp, Wisp CK, because if you see them relocating in, you could either get out of there, or if, it, if, it, or if they're going for your ally, you could get in there and actually help and uh, actually contribute to that fight. Another hero that Team Liquid might want to pick up to deal with this Wisp CK is the Disruptor which means that if they relocate in, you just send the CK right back, kill the Wisp, easy, easy, easy. The ban out is going to be that Puck, which means that the mid lane hero's pool is a little bit restricted now. And I do like that, because mid lane heroes are pretty cool heroes to watch. Mid lane, as well as carry heroes. If you ban out all of those heroes, 
then the game gets really, really interesting. You look good. They do have some lane flexibility, but really it's going to be where they want to go up against VP's uh, kind of more set in stone lanes. I mean, Lone Druid, CK Wisp, they can move together, or they can move around in the lanes, but you know that they're most likely going to stick together, the CK Wisp, and Lone Druid is probably going to get a solo lane. So in that sense, VP, not as flexible as Team Liquid, but the lanes that they do have are incredibly potent. In the mid lane, who is it going to be? It could just be a Wisp, C uh, Wisp CK mid lane. You don't really see that too often. Usually you don't get as much farm, and if you do go for that, you're, that means you want to be more aggressive and actually try to get Ten a couple of kills because the wisp won't be able to uh, won't get be able to get any pulls Brew off master. it's going to be a brewmaster so picking Radius up that uh, that good amount of team fight again another very very tanky hero and at this point I gotta worry if that team liquid Dying might not even have enough damage to break these heroes clockwork doesn't really have that much damage Rubik doesn't have that much damage and the Sajid Lova's new kits hard and his familiars also hit hard they're not very uh, well, the hero, as well as his familiar, is not very durable. Gyrocopter is the only real hard hitter. Uh, the rest of the heroes on Team Liquid mostly just have mediocre spell damage at best. And when you're going up against a Brewmaster split, a CK, as well as a Lone Druid, you need to get something else. What is going to be that decision? If they pick up something like a Necrolite to solo the midline, that would actually work really well get a good mix of healing as well as that percentage based damage although I doubt that's actually what, th what they're going to do they do still need a mid lane hero though and they need someone who could put out a decent amount of damage Lina as well as Wisp are the only real easy targets for VP uh, Lone Druid as well before he gets his level 6 uh, but Team Liquid they are going to be heavily reliant in the late game for that gyrocopter to do the damage and if Five Brewmaster seconds, gets a quick blink then Team Liquid they're they're really squishy except for the clockwork a blink clap into a split and Team Liquid they're going to have to scatter and really they don't have the mobility to kind of s to scatter off if they do try to run away they're just gonna get picked off because they're gonna go up against a lone druid whose bear is going to be running incredibly quickly a CK wisp who could chase you down no matter where you try to run on a map and Team Liquid what mobility do they have they could hook shot out and that's about it they have a couple of isolated stuns which will help them escape but all of this is going to happen with the brewmaster constantly behind them constantly chasing them Therefore, Team Liquid, if they're, if they're going to take a fight, they have to take small individual fights, because if a large fight breaks out, Virtus Pro will just have too much HP to burn through, and Sanking is going to be their final choice, which is going to mean that I have no idea who their mid lane hero is. But Sanking with that magical damage does put out a good amount of bursts, is also uh, pretty good against the Wisp CK. You're going to force them to buy uh, Satchels of Dust when, you want, when they actually want to leave the... Uh, uh, when they actually want to gank and could be aggressive around the map, as well as that epicenter, it won't really help you versus the brewmaster and well everyone else on VP. Everyone on VP actually, well except for I guess crazy, uh, has a way to cancel off that epicenter. So TC, what he needs to do is get an incredibly fast blink dagger. If he gets the jump on VP, the epicenter as well as burst strike will do a lot of damage and really just in at the least uh, buy space for the gyrocopter to get in with that flat cannon get in with that call down and then visage will always have his nuke available because you know there's going to be a lot of damage flying through from team liquid but still i have concerns for liquid because vp's side is incredibly incredibly tanky and the great thing for vp is that all three of their tanky heroes are going to go towards separate lanes so there's not really going to be any uh, interteam competition to see who's going to get the farm so we're gonna see Illidan on the CK, probably soloing this top lane. Although KSI can't on the Lone Druid can handle it as well. Uh, Crazy's gonna be playing the Brewmaster, heading towards the mid lane. So you know, solo CK, solo Lone Druid, solo Brewmaster. Or I mean, Illidan's not gonna solo, but you know, NS as well on the Wisp, as well as Arzart on the Lina, going to mostly try to stay out of Illidan's hair to get as much money as he can. The experience isn't is most likely not going to be as flowing as well as for the other VP heroes. But still, uh, it is going to be there. And Liquid, their job in the early mid game is to shut these heroes down because CK, although he has does have a lot of health, 600 HP from level one game. is a lot to burn through. Their early game is pretty intense. They do have that level one rocket barrage on the gyrocopter. They do have the setup from IX Mike and Fluff and Stuff's nuke on the early stages is very very devastating. Bulba is going to be handling the mid lane, putting the bot lane to TC. Don't think I've ever seen a solo bot lane Sand King and going up against a lone druid on that hard lane. It's going to be absolute hell for the Sand King. 
He doesn't exactly have any uh, good, we go. good uh, crowd control, good creep control measures to start out with. Now with the fact that on top of <laughs> his inherent uh, hero difficulty, he's going to have a hasted spirit bear running around and pulling this creep wave to the uh, tower of KSI means that TC is going to be forced to tank up some creeps, and that is not a situation that you want to be as uh, as the Sand King. You could go for a point of Sandstorm and just try to leech experience that way, or, or try to, I guess, pull the creep wave into his own, but the Spirit Bear is going to be able to pull this creep wave basically no matter where it wants, and he's just sitting there. He doesn't give any Fs in the world. TC is going to bring the creep waves together, actually. So good, oh, is it going to happen? Oh, well, it happened for the most part. They're very taking a lot of damage, but KSI and TC, uh, gotta be careful. TC, you can see already, picking up Caustic Finale. He's gonna punish KSI whenever he walks up with that bear to get a last hit. And although it may not seem that much damage, level 1 Caustic Finale isn't that spectacular with only 90 damage. Every time the Spirit Bear walks in, it will take that 90 damage, and KSI really can't afford to lose that Spirit Bear once. That'll really hurt him, because the cooldown is pretty large, and if it happens again, then it's going to be just absolute hell for him. On this top lane, it's going to be Korok farming up against Illidan's CK. And really, right now, Korok's got to be careful. He's getting a good amount of cover from Fluff as well as IX Mike. So Korok will be able to get a little bit of farm. However, I don't really think they could get the CK killed unless he gets a little bit out of position. NS, as well as ours, are just handling the pulls. And really, without that long-range spell like the Illuminate, there's no way for Liquid to actually contest this because... Uh, whoever they go for, they're probably going to be fine. Arzart is going to just LSA and walk away. NS could tether away. And Liquid, what they're reliant on is this telekinesis. And, well, right now the telekinesis is a little bit too far away. On this mid lane, Bulba, 8 for 1 versus Crazies, 9 for 3. So the Brewmaster doing a little bit better here, but Bulba, uh, as opposed to, oh, top lane getting initiated. 3 second stun. Lucky stun from the CK. Telekinesis is going to stun NS as well as Arzar. Korok still on the run with that Rock Barrage. One more hit is going to kill him off. It's going to be Arzar drawing the first, first blood as Illidan does walk away with that salve active. Fluff and Stuff taking a good amount of damage as well. Another LSA is going to fly. Is there a reality rift? In seven seconds, there will be, but Fluff and Stuff hiding in a corner. He's going to get stuck, and he's going to be brought down as well. Two down for Liquid, but here comes another, uh, Korok once again. Rock Barrage level one doing some pretty heavy damage to CK, but the Wisp does tether in. Going to give him a little more regeneration, and Illidan going to turn around for that reality rift stun, and Korok in a very, very horrible situation. A little bit too over aggressive from him. Trying to pop off that salve, but one more hit. Does not care how much health you regenerate in that short period of time. LSA going to hit on Ix Mike in the meantime. Illidan, does he have any more mana? Telekinesis is going to slow him down, slam him onto NS as well, and it looks like that's going to be it, but VP taking a very, very early three kill advantage with Liquid Trying to focus down the CK, now at 800 HP. Level 4 of the CK is so incredibly difficult to kill, and even though they do have Rocket Barrage, it's only level 1. And now the Gyrocopter, as well as everyone else on Liquid, is going to be massively behind on this top lane. Level 4, level 3, level 2 on the Lina. But still, the fact is that Illidan is getting a huge amount of farm, and now his levels are coming through as well. And with the simple Wisp, CK, uh, Reality Rift, Tether combination, that means pretty much anyone from Liquid is going to die. The burst from Korok is not as high as it needs to be because, well, the CK just has too much health. And they needed to go for the CK because he was the only viable target. But uh, that, in the end, isn't a, great, isn't a great decision to make. Because you cannot kill this man off. So Liquid, they have to find out, find a couple of picks, whether it be on the support heroes or if they can bring down Illidan somehow. They gotta do that to really equalize this lane. KSI taking a good amount of damage from TC, actually being very aggressive versus this lone druid. Going for two points in Caustic, he's pushing the lane incredibly fast. Really restricting, or trying to restrict at least, the space that they get. Oh, here another initiation on this top lane. Illidan looking for reality rifts. Gonna find Fluff, gonna find Korok. Who's it gonna be? It's gonna be Korok, but the tether breaks. Two second stun. Instant telekinesis onto Ars Art. However, he is gonna land LSA, but Illidan does die beforehand. Korok gonna unleash that rock barrage for a second time. Gonna kill off the second one. Ars Art gonna take a full hit from the soul assumption. And Liquid, just as fast as it became an advantage for VP, Liquid gonna tie it up on this top lane. 3-3. Three to three. I have to take a look at who got some of these kills, especially for the carries. Two kills on the CK versus the one kill on the Gyrocopter. So even though the, uh, the first blood did go to VP and they do have a more favorable kill spread on them. So the fact that Liquid took that fight, they had enough tankiness on Korok who did manage to buy up a Bracer and another point in Rocket Barrage really being effective for Liquid. And really what made that fight happen the way it did. And wow, okay. Sorry about missing that. Wouldn't be a great cast if I uh, didn't miss a couple kills, right? <clears throat>
Uh, but really what made that fight is the fact that IX Mike, he used telekinesis onto the Lina. And right uh, in that past fight, one hero from Liquid was here, one was over here, and the other was over here. That is a perfect LSA target. If they all got stunned, it would have been uh, at least uh, one hero from Liquid dead instead of all three of them still surviving. Illidan would have been brought a little bit of time as well, but just slowing down that Lina really just brought Liquid enough time to get that Rocket Barrage out in full, and that gave them that favorable trade. And now another trade happen, or another uh, I guess pickoff happening. Clockwork level seven versus Crazy's level six. So I don't think Bulba's going to be able to get another kill off on this Brewmaster. He'll just be able to pop that split and run away. But Bulba doing a pretty good job on this bottom lane, despite the fact that he is getting CS somehow finding the Brewmaster with not enough HP to actually survive. And TC continuing to push out this bottom lane has now the epicenter as well as that burst strike, and the bear is now in a lot of trouble. The main druid, I mean, he's gonna pop off the ultimate, so a thousand HP on him. It's gonna be very hard to burn through that. I don't think Sand King could kill off the lone druid alone, unless he, for some reason he turns back into his, his druid form, in which case he has like 700 HP. It'll be very, very easy for TC. But the problem is for KSI now is that well, TC is still gonna do that huge burst damage onto the spirit bear. He's gonna get punished a little bit for it. He's gonna. Put a point into that burst strike instead of that uh, sandstorm. Try to save himself from this aggression. Oh, KSI is in a horrible situation. TC can channel that epicenter. Burst strike in. There's the epicenter. No first entangle. It's going to be a full channeled epicenter. TC going to go man mode versus KSI. He will win this fight. He's going to pop in a shower of blood. In the meantime, the top lane, huge aggression there. Fluff and stuff in a little bit of danger. The rock is going to fly. That is going to kill him off. Bulba is going to be on the run as well. Korok, where is he? He's going to escape safely back to base. Dispelling that tornado. Ix Mike going to drop right into the tether. He's going to try to lift up the fire panda, but it's not going to be enough. Just the right clicks from the wisp will do it. And Crazy does pick up a double kill. In the midst of this. Uh, sorry for missing that, but I think... Actually, no, wait. I wish there was a hotkey for this. That would be so cool. Screw it. 30 seconds. We're going to... 40 seconds. We're going to go back 40 seconds in time. Where's the initiation? It's going to be a hook shot in from Bulba. Going to catch Illidan. Ix Mike going to go deep. Try to go for that Arzard. And Fluff is going to pick him off. Bulba right on the, t on the tail of Illidan. is going to keep him locked down with that battery assault. Crazy is going to walk in for that clap onto Fluff. And Fluff is going to take a whole bunch of spirits as well. And then this is where we came in from the fight. I really, really want there to be a hot key for that. Actually, while well, this fight pans out, let's actually go look for that. This is like... 100% unprofessional, but can move forward. Spectator pause. Spectator movement speed. Harvest stats. Stats drop down. No, it's not there. I, I thought I looked. I was hoping it would have been there the second time, which would be so useful. Oh my god, would it be useful? Uh, but yeah, Korok disconnected, and apparently Liquid haven't noticed. <laughs> but yeah, TC finding a pick on this bottom lane. KSI, unfortunately getting kind of screwed over by those creeps and wow ain't that a sight creeps flying in the air but yeah, KSI getting blocked in by one creep TC uh, being rather bold uh, burr striking in before the epicenter which means the bear could have gotten a first hit and tangle and cancelled off the epicenter in which case he would have died instead of channeling the epicenter and then burr striking in but hey he got the kill so it's a kill that really shouldn't have happened from VP side. KSI just getting screwed over a little bit by the Radiant Creep Wave, and TC capitalizing on that to its fullest, and really using that Caustic Finale to good effect, bringing the bear down uh, in large chunks just by proccing it on the creeps, and now KSI, as well as the bear, taking another uh, burst strike, as well as that Caustic Finale damage, and that really is starting to stack up. KSI with 18 for 4 versus TC's 39 for 6. The C this SK really, in my opinion, should not be winning this bottom lane yet with that Caustic finale constantly chipping down that bear he is doing a fantastic job and with the arcane boots as well as a ring of health i don't know what that was misclick not exactly sure what he's going for but you can see he's tapping each creep once he's going to get as much explosion power as possible and ksi he's trying to last hit with the bear but the bear is is, is dropping very very rapidly and ksi he would like to go into the range form and last hit that way but if he does he's going to get Burst struck, he's going to get another epicenter channeled on top of him, and Sanking at this point is really just locking down KSI. This is a lane from Liquid that should not be winning, but it is winning. Dyer's Liquid are uh, cu cu currently leading 7 to 5, and they're going to try to capitalize on that by pushing out the first tier 1 mid tower. Where is Crazy? He's going to go towards the bot lane. This is something that TC probably not prepared for. Do they have true sight? They do not. So, unless they have relocate, do they? Do they do not? TC should be completely fine right now, unless he gets entangled. Just channel the, the channel sandstorm. Burst strike out. Stop gambling on. Start stop gambling on these uh, bear procs. Yeah, he's gonna burst strike out of there. No sandstorm needed. 
But now Crazy as well as KSI got to be in a little bit of trouble because here comes Bulba with the hook shot. Is he going to land on KSI? Do they know that Crazy is still here? Oh, did, he, did they see him? Did they see him? He's going to teleport out and it looks like he's going to stick the landing. But there's a burst. Oh, no, no. Bear. Still going to survive, although the Spirit Bear won't be as lucky. Gonna get Telekinesis back another hundred gold. Gonna go in favor of IX Mike. He's gonna use that to great effect because that is like most of the gold that he's picked up this entire game. Bottom lane tower is actually gonna be the focus after shifting down from that mid lane, and they will pick it up. It's going to be the radiant uh, on that one, and I don't know. Is TC gonna go for a Vanguard? That'll be a very very interesting decision. He it looks like he is. Vanguard on Sand King. Very very interesting. And VP do have some pretty good right clicks, but Sanking and, and focusing the Vanguard instead of a Blink Dagger after dominating the lane, I guess he figures the Blink Dagger isn't that important at this point since Epicenter is not a huge integral part of the Liquid strategy as of yet. But still, this uh, this Vanguard, I, I don't know about this. We'll see. We'll see if it works. I'm sure he's going to live sometime at like 20 HP and it's going to be 100% through the Vanguard. Oh, Fluff and stuff a little bit out of position. Three seconds stun, as well as the Tether. Arzart with the Dragon Slave over the top, and then Illidan Storm Rage just beat him down. Visage taking his third death at four kills, actually. He does have the Buckler as well as that Headdress, so he's not doing too badly on that tri lane. Ix Mike 0 0-1-5, racking up that assist gold, but unfortunately not getting many kills. And how's Korok doing? 1, 2, 4. Lots of assists on him, but only a level 4 gyrocopter. This is not what Liquid wants to see right now. Versus level 8 CK? Level 8, level 8. And wow, the levels from Liquid just are not there. That aggressive tri lane, although they had some decent trades. Oh, hook shot in. Gonna cast Ars Art in the cogs as well. Ars Art's gonna drop to Bulba alone. Bulba getting them solo kills. Oh, here comes the uh, relocate in. Gonna be a very dead Rubik as TC looking for a burst strike. Gonna get it onto the Wisp, but now he's gonna get beaten down. The Vanguard doing some pretty good work for him. The Familiar's going to cast that stun, but unfortunately not buying enough time for TC to get out of there. Burst strike under the high ground, TC. Oh, it's not. Yeah, it's too late. Bulba's still in this fight. Gonna try to go for crazy, but there's a split. Brewmaster does not care about the cogs. Bulba's gonna get entangled as well. And now another reality rift. He's probably gonna drop. He should drop. One more right click. He there. There it is. Telekinesis onto Illidan. Gonna slam him into Art's Art, stunning him. But still, Fluff and Stuff in this fight with the Brewmaster ultimate still active. He's gonna get a nuke out onto uh, the Wisp and kill him off. But uh, Fluff is going to get slammed by both the uh, Clap as well as the LSA. In the end, VP do take a favorable trade there. The Wisp, I, he relocated in, but I guess he walked down from the top lane, I don't know. But you can see uh, Liquid not having a successful epicenter. Gotta say, uh, the Vanguard did help TC survive for just a little bit longer, but he missed the epicenter completely. So would he have gotten a better epicenter off if he had a Blink Dagger? Well, I mean, he doesn't really have enough man uh, money for a Blink Dagger, even with that Vanguard purchase. Actually, he does. He would have. I don't know. Just saying, TC, Blink Dagger is a pretty good item, and I don't, I don't know about that Vanguard. But there's really just not enough damage from <clears throat> Liquid to bring down these really, really hard tanky heroes. Oh, another relocate, possibly. Who's it going to be? It's going to be on this top lane. TC going to burrow strike away, but still get stunned. Where's the dust? There it is. Four seconds stun on top of that, and now TC is going to get even Phantasm. They really want this Sand King dead, and they should be able to do it. Two seconds stun. Burrow strike to the high ground, TC. Burrow strike. Burrow strike up to the high ground, and Bulba, as well as the familiars, are here to protect. There's the hookshot completely whiffed. Illidan with a tiny juke is going to survive. And TC as well. That Vanguard, man. Okay, I, maybe I, I changed my mind. Vanguard is, uh, it worked out. It saved him definitely from that relocate gank. But he's going to have to go back to the fountain regardless. So either way, he's out of the experience in gold game for just a little bit as he walks all the way back and then possibly walks, uh, you know, returns to the lane that way. Wisp as well as CK, not enough damage to kill off this very, very tanky high level Sand King. He is the m highest level on Liquid, I believe, unless Clockwork. Uh, no, he is the highest level. Clock really needs to get a little bit more farm going because VP, even though the Wisp CK didn't have a huge display of power on their gank attempts on that Sand King, they will still have a CK who is getting a good amount of farm, and Brewmaster's damage is always going to be high. Lena does have that level 6 as well. And really, no one from Liquid is safe from that. I guess Clockwork might be a little bit safe, but if he's going to jump in half suicidally, it's going to be a little bit dangerous for him. Ike Mike going to get a lift onto Crazy. They want to at least force out this ultimate. Unfortunately, the Cogs pushing Crazy away. 
Bulba's not going to be able to make something happen. He is going to spot out Arzart on the top side, so he's going to know to be a little bit more careful. Cogs are up in another four seconds. They could want to go for this again, especially since TC moving in with that epicenter up and available. Crazy's got to be careful. He doesn't have his split just yet. If he delays for another 10 seconds, he'll be completely fine, but it looks like it's going to be a push as Fluff does proc that buckler, and they want to take down this tier 1 tower. DP, though, they can fight this. Relocate is up. Unfortunately, the Phantasm is not, but with everything up and available for them, they should be able to defend this if they do choose to do so. Familiars, though, doing a lot of damage. The bear on the front line, stolen by Rubik, actually. I would not have expected that. Crazy trying to go for Deny, but unfortunately, Fortification blocking that off. And who's it going to be? Is it going to be Crazy? He will get the Deny. Bear, unfortunately, completely naked from IX Mike, which I don't know how often IX Mike plays a uh, lone druid. Gotta say, never seen him play a lone druid in a pro game, always being that support hero. Top but he's going to use the bear to attack. stack. That is amazing. You know, usually just trying to steal spells from the lone druid at all is not the best because this bear doesn't get any synergy Radiance bonuses, I don't believe. Uh, 33 damage versus... Where is the bear? 74. Yeah, that's 40 damage from synergy, right? Yeah, he does not get synergy bonuses. So the bear is kind of lackluster and the bear oh, is timed out. So not very effective to even try to steal any spells from the Lone Druid. If he could steal, uh, you know, even Clapper Primal Split, very good I, uh, very good uh, skills to steal. Korok farming and not messing around while doing so. Gonna use the call down on the creeps. Not sure if they deserved that, but they certainly are dead now. But Axe Mike will be able to steal uh, basically anything that the Lena has to offer, anything that the Brewmaster has to offer. Uh, CK is also pretty decent. Reality Rift, not great, but a Chaos Bolt is fantastic to steal just because it's a stun. and. Combine that with your telekinesis, and you have a lot of stunning action. Bulba with an invisibility rune, looking for a two-man cog. Is he going to find it? Is he going to settle for KSI? There, no. Hookshot, once again, missing. Bulba, what you doing? He's going to push KSI as, away as well. Bulba going to get entangled. Laguna Blade on top of that. Korok going to take a four-second stun as the Phantasm does pop. Bulba still trying to run away. The bear is right on top of him, though, with the spirits. Will kill him off. Another uh, reality rift attempt, but here comes the big epicenter. Going to kill off Illidan at least. No, it won't be enough to kill off Illidan as Korok is going to be the one to drop. But Korok does pop his magic wand, and he will be just fine, but the bear, uh, the the broodlings are right on top of them. TC as well as IX Mike trying to play a little bit of a support role, but IX Mike is going to be the target of focus the, anew, and now he's going to get entangled once again by the bear. LSA as Lena tries to escape from Fluff. Fluff's going to throw out one more nuke, try to right click down this wisp, and it won't be enough. The nuke is a little bit too low a range. TC going to come right back in, but he really doesn't have anything else for this. Going to pop out the sandstorm, maybe, but Korok is still alive. Going to pop that call down onto KSI, slow him down with that second missile. Does TC have another burst strike? They don't have enough damage really to bring down this bear. That's their problem right now. Despite these burrow strikes, though, Familiar is actually returning. KSI taking a good amount of damage. Where is Bulba? He's going to throw out some missiles. They have another 12 seconds until his hook shot is available. Korok is very low on HP, though. Illidan going to jump right in for four seconds. Stun. Two men on that burrow strike in retaliation, though. Is there another stomp from these Familiars? No, there is not. Tama Wild is going to die within the cogs. Illidan on the run. Bulba is going to try to lock him down with that battery assault. But here comes the Wisp, as well as Arzart, relocating in Light LSA, as well as the Laguna Blade onto TC. He's very dead. Bulba now on the run. going to pop up the cogs, but he really doesn't have anywhere to run because there is another reality rift. Can hook shot onto Arzart, trying to make his way out. Arzart should be able to hit this LSA as he does do so. Another follow-up stun from the CK and Arzat with the Dragon Slave is going to put VP at a 16 to 12 advantage. So many revivals and teleportations in. NS bringing Arzart into that fight with that relocate. And in the end, VP, they do take a favorable fight because they... Liquid, they dumped their entire payload trying to kill these very tanky heroes once. And although they did withstand the Brewmaster's ultimate, they couldn't not they could not risk withstand the Brewmaster dying and coming back and the CK dying and buying back because all their damage is on pretty high cooldown spells, with the exception of I guess Soul Assumption. Uh, Korok just got locked down from the get-go. He needs a BKB to be effective, but if you go for the BKB in the situation, you won't have enough damage. Oh, here we go. Another fight on this bottom lane. Familiar's looking for a stomp. Ars Art trying to get away. Won't happen. Forces cancel that TP. Bulba looking for a hook shot. In 15 seconds, he will have it, but Arzart, a little bit too fast. Bluff and stuff needs another grave chill. Will he land it? He will get it onto Arzart. Lifts it up into the air as well. Blink forward from Crazy. Gonna get stunned immediately by the Familiar's. Arzart gonna get a stun, but it's not gonna be enough to save him. Now Crazy does have a missile after him. Do they have any more spells? The missile is not gonna land in time, but a burst strike does. TC stunning that uh, Brewmaster out of his teleportation and Liquid. Take two, bringing everyone onto the spot lane. They really want to get a tower out of this as well. Because right now, VP do have the experience advantage. Gold advantage, not so much it is, as it is going to turn in the favor of Liquid very shortly. 
in this game so far very very high action and pretty dead even on top of that the longer liquid do this the longer that they will give Korok time to really build up some more damage he is going to be going up against a very high damage hero in the sea oh fluff gotta run hide Oh, with spirits, you can't hide from them. Fluff and stuff gonna get me out of your back. But actually, on the outside, he's no, he's not blocking Illidan. No, even though it looks like it, Ix Mike's gonna teleport in. Does have Dragon Slave? Gonna try to bring down uh, NS, but that Mech Charge is gonna keep him alive. Ix Mike gonna get slaughtered by Illidan. Now here comes another burst strike from TC, trying to pop off the epicenter. Will land it onto Illidan, but look at this damage he's doing. It's none at all. Call down as well. They will bring down Illidan, although it took way too long. KSI on the run out. He will make it out, but his bear will not. He's going to be forced to resummon that in another 35 seconds. Liquid losing two supports in exchange for the hard carry of VP. There's a blink forward. Crazy wants blood. He's gonna does is gonna pop a split. Laguna Blade onto Korok as well. He's gonna drop immediately. Boba gonna get use the cogs, trap NS, but now he's on the run. On uh, the familiar is not available with that stomp to actually try to defend Bulba, but he is fairly tanky. LSA as well as the Brewmaster just wailing on him, and he is surviving through all of this, trying to bottle up through this. He will survive as the final act of the Brewmaster will be to throw the Visage up into the air. Missile's gonna fly out. Bulba possibly looking for a hookshot reinitiation. That'll be incredibly ballsy. He doesn't really have much support aside from Fluff, but we do have IX Mike as well as TC. Heading on to this mid lane. There it is. It's going to be last latch in. Going to go for Arzart. Going to catch him in the cogs. Going to take an LSA, but Arzart is going to die. Mech Charge trying to keep him alive. TC going to get a burst strike all the way through. Arzart is going to die. Now TC going to get a little bit of eye blocking action. Here comes Illidan getting a hit by a stun from someone. I think it was a telekinesis crazy. Still on the run. Soul Sumter will kill him off. Ix Mike could take a three second stun, but a retaliation burst strike will keep him alive. And now another LSA. That is something that Ix Mike stole. The nukes from Fluff constantly flying out. TC burst striking in and out of this fight. Does have a blink dagger up and available to relocate. Is going to save them at least for a little bit but KSI is on the run and to get hit by a burst strike the bear is going to die as well do a little bit of damage to KSI but really he's just playing bait as the wisp CK they're going to come back in full force and KSI they should be able to take him down another burst strike the flying vision from the familiars should be enough to kill him off as they do have enough damage to really focus him down but the wisp as well as CK have returned to this fight are in a very very good condition and holy crap these fights are a little bit too intense a little bit too intense. Sanking does have that blink dagger now, so his initiation range just increased by a huge amount. But let's take a look at who, in the end, is in favor here. The EXP advantage still being held by VP, but gold, liquid starting to catch up. And now this is going to be another initiation. Oh, TC going to burn his ultimate for Arzart. That's going to be a dead Lena, even though there is a mech charge. Fluff and stuff keep doing the damage with that nuke. Illidan as well as Crazy looking for initiation. Try to counter that off. But Korok actually getting picked off with a blink clap. Illidan wants blood right now. Hookshot going to whiff once again from Bulba. Going to pop off the cogs to prevent any further chasing from VP. Lena, is, he re is Lena really worth that epicenter? I would say maybe in some situations. Very few situations. Is Lena worth Korok? Definitely, definitely not. Gyrocopter took a little bit too much damage there. And VP take a, a very favorable trade. And hopefully this game will settle down a little bit so I get over like items or anything. It looks like it looks like we are going to be seeing a little bit of calmness for just a little bit. Illidan as well as NS looking for the rune. It's gonna be a regen on the top lane, but they're gonna go straight towards the bot lane. This is the gonna be the classic uh, Wisp CK play, split pushing. They could just go down to the bot lane, not have a care in the world while the rest of their team does pretty much anything. And if any of them get jumped, instant relocate in. Suddenly it's going to be a unfavorable gank for Liquid. But Liquid, what have they gained from all these trades? They have a Blink Dagger on TC, which is an absolutely huge item. Korok has recovered from his kind of poor early game, has found a good amount of farm, and is actually almost leading as far as gold per minute is concerned. Both two slots in gold per minute is being led by Liquid, with TC in the number one spot. He's going to go, yes, going to go for that Veil. It's not going to help the Korok. Actually, it's going to help everyone on Liquid decently, except for Clockwork, maybe not as much for Rubik. But these Soul Assumptions... Uh, Visage just is not going down in these fights. Does have a Ghost Scepter as well as the mech. Constantly throwing out those nukes. He is 11 6 5. He's getting a lot of kills. And when you boost that magical damage by the additional uh, Veil magic resistance swing, that's going to be pretty huge. And TC, uh, as a Sand King, if you are just looking for damage, the Veil does increase your Epicenter's damage more than the Aghanim Scepter does. So. TC going to go full on damage. Really what they need to do is go for exactly that. NS is so very dead. Blink into Burrow Strike. He does have a tether target, but it's not going to be in time. Rubik with the Fade Bolt killing off the Wisp. VP, they're down the Wisp, but they could still take a fight. They're down the mech, however. So it looks like VP, uh, 
well. Liquid just gonna finish off the stack that VP were trying to kill. Quark will get a little bit more farm from that one and continue his lead on the t uh, on the uh, gold chart. Let's do an overall item check because there was so much fighting, couldn't really keep track of any item developments or uh, level developments. Let's go uh, from left to right, shall we? Sand King, oh wow, he's almost level 15. This guy's getting a lot of experience. 1, 2, 9, a lot, not a lot of kills on the Sand King, but just having that guaranteed stun is really, really working out for Team Liquid. And he's hitting everyone at least once, so they also have that explosion of fun after every kill. Korok is going to go for a BKB, it looks like, after his Yasha. Feels comfortable enough with the magic damage that they're going to get from this Veil. You could really start delaying your physical damage items in favor of defensive items. Relocate from NS as well as Ilden. Failure to catch Korok. Having that Yasha as well as those treads and drums. Very, very slippery and high movement speed hero. Massage, as I said before, Ghost Scepter as well as Mech. It's going to be very hard for VP to kill him off, especially with maxed out. Gravekeeper's Cloak. Bulba has not much, just has the urn. IX Mike, not much either. NS does have his mech up. I mentioned that already. CK going to go for his BKB, so that's going to make Life for Liquid very, very hard. Nothing to really go through that, with the exception of Calldown as well as the Cogs. Uh, Lone Druid, where's the bear? That's the really important thing. Has gone for a Maelstrom, so he's going to be able to put out a little bit more damage. As well as be incredibly tanky and the uh, crazy on Brewmaster. Also going for a Cloak just to help a little bit out. Don't see him going for a Pipe anytime soon. He's going to probably hold that until he get his Aghanim Scepter up and running. And he also does have a Blink Dagger. Arzart hasn't really been getting all that much in these fights, so he's going to be walking around with very few items as well. And that just about covers it. So, yeah, Liquid making up for their lack of real right-click damage with this Sand King. And it's working out pretty decently for them. Sand King almost is level 16, so that Epicenter is going to get an additional two pulses. And that's an additional two pulses that's going to be, or should be, boosted by a Veil of Discord. He should have that item up by the time he hits that uh, level 16 mark. And even though VP, they do have BKBs going up, they do have cloaks on pretty much everyone. Uh, still the damage from Sand King, as well as that call down, is really going to be huge for the Liquid side. This is going to mean that Gyrocopter does have enough freedom to go for something that isn't necessarily a flat damage item. Now, Drums, as well as Yasha, will make you uh, a very mobile hero, but you won't be doing that much damage. And he is going to be going for his BKB, should have that in after this Ancient Stack, actually. So, Ancient Stack dies, Croc will have his BKB. And right now, this Gyrocopter is basically just a call down until he gets a couple more damage items up. Because the call down will really just be his the largest damage output that he has, especially once that Veil gets up. Veil, as well as Call Down. Call Down does some pretty good damage. 300 plus 150, 450 uh, in two chunks, of course. But amplified by that Veil, combined with the Epicenter, that's huge amounts of AoE damage. And if you have Bulba to keep VP in those cogs, then VP, even though they have a lot of health, even though they have the cloaks, they will still just melt, unless the Brewmaster does get his, uh, his ultimate R, in which case he won't have a care in the world. NS, as well as... Illidan relocating from somewhere trying to go for someone in the mid lane, but I guess that was unsuccessful as well. He's going to return up to that top lane, the Wisp is going to continue to farm. In the meantime, Lone Druid has picked up the Aegis of the Immortal after pretty much solo killing Roshan. Arzard going to dip in a little bit to help. Now they're going to have to deal with the bear twice. Uh, he will have the resummon, or he should have the resummon. Actually, it's uh, quite a long cooldown on that bear still. KSI, he's really tanky. His bear, still not the largest threat. Liquid could still deal with that bear uh, fairly decently, but the items from VP are starting to come up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Bear is now a much larger threat. He's gonna fly out. They have the Navi Courier. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Take a quick look. It's gonna be the Chicken Courier. Cluckles the Brave. All right. Uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? Um, right, armlet on the bear can increase his damage output by a lot. Pretty much uh, is the same damage output as a maelstrom, but of course on single targets. But on top of that, the bear is going to be a lot more difficult to kill. Liquid, with all their magic spells flying around, they have been able to kill off the bear pretty much every single time they fight. With that additional armor, that will uh, give the bear a little bit more durability, especially since the the bear. Uh, is going to mostly just shrug off the already semi-low right clicks from Korok. And now Liquid, they seem to be a little bit complacent with their actions. They can't really just sit around and let the VP side farm, because then they're going to be up against a stacked CK as well as a stacked Lone Druid. And although Jarakopter V pulls out something like a Divine Rapier, he can combat that. It's still going to be a little bit risky. Crazy going to get chased away by a missile. 
and Liquid. They're gonna go for a tier one tower. Bear on the front line is gonna draw the aggro. KSI gotta make sure to play those angles, not get hit by a hook shot. Bulba so far hasn't been the best of the hook shots, but hey, I'm sure you can make it one happen. There's the blink clap initiation squad gonna pop up the BKB immediately, as well as the call down. But here's an epicenter gonna hit very well on the KSI as well as his bear. They both should be brought down. Korok gonna kill off all the Brewmaster Illusions. Here's the relocate, gonna go for Bulba, but the cog's actually pushing the CK away. Bulba is gonna try to slip away from this. Arzak does have a Luguna Blade. He is gonna pop it onto IX Mike. No, he's gonna hold on to it, and there's a relocate uh uh, a reality Rift once again as two down from Liquid and only one. Ars Art back. Uh, Ars Art's gonna die from uh, the Lena. Another four second stun onto Fluff as well as an Entangle. He's gonna try to micro his illusions to finish off KSI, but he does still have the Aegis and Liquid burning everything. Epicenter only onto one target, and that's a target that does have an Aegis. And that il relocate in Illidan as well as NS. Catching Liquid from behind. Really just uh, VP. Reliant on that Panda Ultimate to take a good fight. It's not necessarily a bad thing, especially when the Panda Ultimate does very, very well. Scattered Liquid immediately. Forced out all of their big spells. Oh no, Bulba, you don't want to be there. LSA gonna miss and the Cogs are pushing back. There's the Blink Burrow Strike. TC just trying to play a couple angles. Illidan will take a little bit of damage from the Familiars, but he should be just fine to walk his way out of here. The BKB really, really helping him out and what's been stolen in Reality Rift. Not the best spell because it does put Rubik in harm's way. But does have a long range on it, so if he catches someone out, they know where a couple heroes are. Arzart, Illidan, as well as NS. Gonna, what the hell was that? I have no idea. They're all gonna get hit by the missile, but Liquid taking uh, the worst fight of this game so far. Really, I do think it's because of that BKB CK from uh, in the beginning, as well as the fact that Liquid burned everything they had, just trying to slow down that Panda Ultimate. I mean, Korok was focusing those pandas for quite a while, and although Flat Cannon will mean that he's not necessarily focusing them down, still, uh, he, his attention should be other, in other places. There's another 4 second stun, plus a Luguna Blade on the Korok. Bulba's gonna come in with the Cogs, not gonna be in time. Ix Mike does get lassoed, and TC, once again, only using his Epicenter onto one hero. This is not the way you need to use Epicenter in these fights. Burrow Strike is going to get uh, hit a couple, but he's gonna run right into that tether, and he's gonna try to sandstorm his way out. Fluff is gonna teleport his way out, but VP taking another 3 free kills. Liquid just going to this middle lane to just throw themselves at the tower and feed. And it's going to be VP starting to pull away with a lead now. You can see it was pretty highly contested, but now VP dipping very, very far in favor of the experience graph. What are these things? I have no idea what's flying. They look like soul assumptions, but what? Is that a bug? Wow, Fluff is... He looks really bugged. That's not right, right? It doesn't usually look like that. But VP has a pretty huge advantage. They're going to take down the tier 2 tower and now armlets on everything. There's a Phantasm. Blink clap from Crazy. Does have that, upset, that ultimate up once again. Oh my god, Ix Mike getting demolished by Illidan. Crazy still on his way out. Wants to get enough time for that Blink Dagger to recharge. Well, I'm going to pop up some cogs, but he's going to pull that straight away. As well as a Laguna Blade on top of that. Crazy going to take a little bit of soul assumption damage, but he's not really going to care. There's another Entangle onto that Gyrocopter. He's going to try to run his way out, but no. Illidan, just too much damage with that Phantasm. is going to pick off one after another after another. Now Fluff can take an LSA as well as a Reality Rift. And VP completely cracked open the entire base of Liquid. The game looked very even. The game really looked very even. But there's that first fight here. And she gave VP so much momentum. And then Liquid, for some reason, trying to go for that same exact thing again. And VP just simply too tanky. The CK got too much farm. And the Epicenter com uh, Veil combo just didn't do enough damage, especially since most of these Brewlings are magic immune. The CK was magic immune as well, and KSI was taking the brunt of it, but he doesn't even care because his bear does have that uh, demolish spell resistance, and he himself does have the additional spell resistance as well. So Liquid putting up a very good fight, putting up a very entertaining fight, but unfortunately will not be able to close the series out 2-0. So we are going to move on to a game number 3 as soon as... Bulba decides to uh, stop beating. Come on, Bulba. Prove your. Oh, whoa. Oh, he, he got him. And he survived. It's a miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. But this game is over. Everyone from Liquid is gone. We're just going to wait for the Ancient to pop. All right. So, VP tied up one to one. We're going to be moving on to game number three. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, subscribe. If you did not, then let me know why. Otherwise, we're going to see who's going to take this series. So far, some pretty high action games. Just keep rolling on. GG. What's up, guys? This is Mike Loris, and I'm going to be playing Tiny Tiny. 
Yay! I'm going to be playing something a little bit differently. So we're, what the hell do you want? Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna jungle. We have a jungle troll. Yeah, I'm gonna be playing tiny, and this is going to be a, something a little bit different. So we're just gonna. Oh yeah, sounds fine down there. He's, he's fine. He's tanky. He's gonna be up against like, ogre magi and priestess or something like that. I don't know. But we're just gonna be farming as normal. We do have lion to kind of accompany us in our journey, so we get that double stun lane. Should be a very, very enjoyable time, unless there's gonna be many people here. But I don't think that's actually gonna be a problem right now. What I just want to do is farm, and yes, I know I already do have a tiny game up, but I don't plan on uh, making this one another just standard one. And this is one's gonna be a little bit different because we are in it for the lols. And if you're not playing Dota for lols, then why are you bothering? Oh, good. Speaking of, I think we uh, think we covered this. I think we covered this possibility, guys. All right, let's just uh, continue to do this. We should be fine to last hit, because uh, Windrunner's scared of Lion or something. As long as she doesn't harass me, because I have zero armor. Oh shit! This lane just suddenly got a lot of unfun into it. As long as they don't harass me, don't touch me at all. Let me get the last hit, so I'm fine with that. But that guy hurts like hell. Oh my god, my health. Where did it go? <laughs> I wish I had some armor. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, my armor is non-existent. And now we're going to be fighting over these creeps right here. Come on, range creeps, follow me. Yeah, punch him. Okay, we got a couple too many, too many creeps over here. Not too sure how much I enjoy this. I would just rather farm up guys than fight. Not exactly in my best interest right now to be really just duking it out. Where are these creeps going? This range creep's gonna scout them out, and the rest of the creeps are gonna defend the tower. Like good little creeps. Just as they should. The great thing about Tiny is that he has so much base damage that even I could last hit. Except for that one. That one was the exception to the. Then that one. Those are exceptions. So let's, uh. just hold on to our restoratives, I guess. First, we're gonna go for boots, because boots are nice to have. Uh, this lane, I guess Magic Wand would also be pretty decent. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Have some pain. Right clicks, Lion. Right clicks. Right clicks. Oh, yeah. Punch him. Stone fist in the gut. Oh, yeah. There we go. We're off to a roaring start, despite the fact that our centaur died for a second time. Tiny in the house. It's good times. It is such good times. Let's actually just drink everything that we have and boots yeah we're gonna go boots if Lion could get quick arcanes that would be awesome but I don't really think that's gonna happen because he's a support hero and he's playing as he should very good very good lion as long as they they're they're really nice to me this game actually they're not they're not being too aggressive I do have enough I mean max mana to get my combo off should I burn another clarity another hundred mana is that really worth it yeah, that, I think you can do it. I am doing it. Who's being nerfed? Oh, Batrider's being nerfed. Yeah, Batrider's pretty OP, if I do say so myself. I just want to get enough mana for a combo, which means 240. As long as Windrunner doesn't do anything to uh, mess that up, I should have enough, which I will in a couple seconds. I might go for a set of Arcane Boots. Uh, that might actually be a good idea. I think I will do that. Cause, judging by the build that I'm about to go, I might need the arcane boots to kind of just hold me over. Or uh, power treads might also be a viable option, but oh crap, not enough base damage. Base damage is too difficult of a concept for my tiny brain to understand. There we go. Okay, um, mathematically we are going to optimize, I guess, or n partially optimize. We're going to be playing a little bit lulzy on the side, as I said before. But for now, it's just, you know, just standard stuff. Ogre missing. I don't know where Ogre went. Hopefully he's not right next to me. But we could get this guy killed right here. Oh, shit. Didn't get the right one. Should be fine regardless. Punch him. Punch this one next. Oh, he wants to fight. He wants in on this. <laughs> no, get him. Get him, Lion. Please get him. Oh, damn it, Lion. Oh, 
but we're so close to... Oh, well, some of us are close to death. Let's just get this. Um, yeah, so we can just keep pouring on that aggression. Uh, that was a little bit too greedy, perhaps. I'm just going to eat through all these as well. Because it is nutritious. And, well, let's get a... Let's get this. Clear up some inventory slots. And then we're going to be going for the mystery item. And I know, guys, I know. What could possibly be the mystery item? Is it going to be a Dagon? Is it going to be a Veil of Discord? Is it going to be a Heaven's Halberd or a... Or a necrobook rush? Well, you're just gonna have to wait and see, because I sure as hell am not gonna tell you. I'm gonna. I, I don't wanna put it in quick buy. Oh my god, my health. I am so dead. I am so dead. I could do some damage before I die. Oh dear, they saw me there. They definitely saw me there. That was not a good place to be. And that kinda slowed me down, although I only have 19. Uh, 9, 4, 4 per minute. That's not that good, actually. I thought it was last hitting better than that. I guess it was the fact that I was like right under my tower for that for a good deal of time there that kind of got screwed over. I'm just going to wait here for a TP. Oh, Marana's so safe farming the bot lane. That's not too deadly, got to be honest. And if I am the reason we lose this game because of my suboptimal build, then so be it. That is just something that I'm going to have to be uh, forced to live with for the rest of my days. I'll be okay with that, because we're getting kills around the map. Lion's getting his farm on, I'm getting my farm on, and we're overall a very happy team. I just need to get a lot more farm on, which is... I got two kills and assists, I feel like I should have more than... Actually, six minute arcane boots is pretty friggin' amazing. I don't know why I'm second guessing myself. I am playing like an absolute champ, I deserve a medal. From the president of multiple countries. Pretty much any country that has a president should be giving me a medal right now. I have arcane boots, dude. I could I could support you with some mana. Because you have done good by me, I shall respond and do good by you as well. We just need a little bit more gold. We just need a little bit more gold. And by a little bit more gold, I mean like 4,000 more gold. So that's going to be fun to farm up for, right? I don't think Marana's going to be a huge problem. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, the pain is so much pain. Oh, yeah, we have Troll Warlord as well. I forgot about that. I forgot about his ultimate, that is. <laughs> like slots to a flames game. Nice and easy. We have Arcane Boots, we have a lot of mana, we have our Avalanche Toss combination up and available. We're just going to be hitting these creeps. Because hitting creeps is what the cool ki troll. Why you gotta be like that troll? All right. Nope. Oh yeah. Okay. Get this tower down. Get it down. I don't want this toss damage. Beautiful. Let's get. Let's get a. Uh, uh, should we get the first part of the item? Or should we hold on to it? Let's get the first part. I'm gonna try to. I'm not gonna be so uh, clear about it as well. Let's. Uh, I think this is a part of it, so we could just do this, and uh, we'll get part of this as well. Oh yeah, max movement speed. Here we go, baby. Better watch yourself, Windrunner. You get too close to this shit, you will get rocks all up in your grill. Not the good kind either. Oh wow, that was some shackle shot right there. Uh, toss him. Toss something. Jesus, Tiny. Come on. I trusted you. I trusted you. What do you want? What do you want, Bat? I'm, I'm working here. I am working here. I have another toss avalanche. I could land it on her. I don't even have to get the correct combo. I just have to land the avalanche on her. Ah, uh, they're doing fine. I, I'm just gonna kill the Windrunner. I'm just gonna kill the Windrunner. Oh, I completely missed. Huh. This is me carrying, Windrunner. Oh, shit. That was like the worst avalanche I've casted in my entire life. This person really wants me dead. She knows I don't have any mana, but joke's on her, I actually do have mana. I'm going to go back in for this. I'm going to go back in, guys. I just need something to throw. Here we go. Ready? Huh! Kill him! Oh. Come on. Please, Windrunner, please! Who do you think you're up against? 
what game do you think you're playing right now? Because whatever game you think you're playing, I'm going to yeah. tell you right now that th that's not the correct game. All right, so we're doing pretty well, farming the Windrunner's head off. And uh, we just need a little bit more gold. Just need a little bit more gold. Now, the ideal way to reveal this item would be to save up enough gold for it and then just buy it all in one shot. But the problem with that is that it's a pretty expensive item. So I don't actually know if I could do that. Like, I mean, I, I would love to have enough gold and just buy it in one shot. That would Nothing would make me happier than doing that, but I don't know if I actually can, like, realistically. Because there's a lot of gold to hold on to, and I don't want to use the quick buy because that'll be not fun. Oh, guys, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Wow, we didn't get him? Wow, we didn't get him! Holy crap! What kind of... What? I guess when you're sitting at 1 HP, it's not that hard to deny yourself, right? You just turn on Rot. It's kind of hard to outlast hit that. And he has a couple points in uh, Shallow Grave. I feel like that was... What's up? Ah, yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. My, my health. My health pools. Guys... Guys, I need to helps. Oh yeah, the to helps is a here. To helps has arrived. Get in there! Get in there, lion! You coward! Get in there! All right. <laughs> I think the correct term is goombud. All right. So I am. Oh, do you know what I'm gonna do? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the recording, buy the item, put it on the courier so you can't see it, and then just continue playing as usual. That's what I'm going to do. Ready?